knew this guy. I liked him. He'd come back from cancer, and now he looks like he can win the Tour de France. But it didn't add up. The obvious question was, Lance, you'd ridden this race four times when you're in the whole of your health, long before you got cancer, and you could never compete. So on the Sunday that Lance won his first Tour de France, I wrote a sentence in the Sunday Times that said, there are times in life when you should applaud the champion. There are other times when you'd better keep your arms by your sides. This afternoon, a 27-year-old Texan will ride down the Champs-Élysées in a yellow jersey, and it's time to keep your arms by your sides. What we need is not acclamation of a new champion, but an inquiry. And the headline on the piece was a flawed fairy tale. So I then had to try to prove that Lance was a fraud because I totally believed it. You might say, but you were acting on a hunch. I would say I was acting on a gut conviction. I had a friend in Italy, Sandro Donati. He worked for the Italian Olympic Committee. I said, Sandro, I know that Lance's teammate, Kevin Livingston, was working with this doping doctor in Italy. I said, um, Lance must be working with him as well. Could you, could you help me find out? He got the Italian Carbonieri to go to Ferrari's town where this doctor operated his clinic. And the police went to the two best hotels in town and said, could you show us your register? And they went through the registers and they found Lance Armstrong's name all over the registers for the previous three years. Because in the months after that story appeared in the Sunday Times, M. O'Reilly came to me, Betsy Andreo came to me, and Stephen Swart. And M. O'Reilly and Betsy Andreo, Emma had worked with Armstrong in the team for five years. She knew about the doping, she told me. Betsy, her husband was Frankie's best friend. She said, look, when he was being treated for cancer, I heard him tell his doctors all about uh, his doping. He mentioned the performance enhancing drugs he was using in my hearing. And you might ask then, how did he get brought down? What happened? He got brought down because like a lot of people who have very high IQs, and Lance is a very bright guy, but he was bright in the analytical sense. But what Lance didn't have so much, especially in those kind of achieving years, was emotional intelligence. He didn't understand that when Emma O'Reilly left the team, a little bit disgruntled by how she had been treated, that she wouldn't take her secrets to the grave. He didn't understand that if he gave Frankie Andreo a hard time, that his wife Betsy mightn't, you know, take against him as she did. And then finally, he had Floyd Landis, his teammate who had done great work for him, who won the Tour de France when Lance retired in 2005, because Lance retired, remember, in 2005. He would come back three years later and ride again after a three-year break. And when he came back, his old teammate Floyd Landis said, Lance, you know, I won the tour after yours, but I tested positive. I fought for two years, I lost everything. They still gave me a ban. Now I need a place in your team. And Lance said, sorry, Floyd, you were caught, man. You're toxic. We can't take you in the team. And Floyd Landis then sent out a string of emails saying, we all doped. And that was the beginning of the end for Lance Armstrong. 